Shabbat Shalom to all the truth seekers and believers of the one true God, Yahweh, the Most High, and his word that he has given us for reproof and correction. Shabbat Shalom. Hope all is doing well today. Um, and of course, tonight is the start of or the day for the Feast of Trumpets or blowing of the trumpets. So um, happy Feast of Trumpets to you all uh, as well. So today we're pretty much going to be just um, explaining what is the Feast of Trumpets, um, what does it mean, how do we celebrate it, and um, where in Scripture can we find information about the Feast of Trumpets. So let's go ahead and get it started for today. This lesson will not be that long. Again, we're just explaining what is the Feast of Trumpets um, and finding the Scriptures that aligns with um, the Feast. So it's not going to be that long today as we are preparing for our feast, of course, as well. Um, so, of course, the three verses that I believe go hand in hand with one another as you are studying the scripture are the three verses that we start off in every lesson. Isaiah 28 at verse 10. Isaiah 28 at verse 10. For precept must be upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line line upon line here a little and there a little in order for you to get a great understanding or a better understanding of specific topics or concepts or um feast days you have to go find those precepts in the bible that explains or talks about that specific feast day topic or concept um that's the only way you're gonna get an understanding you cannot just read one book and and assume you know everything about that specific topic when there are other accounts and other mentions of that specific concept throughout other books. So you have to find those precepts to get a better understanding of the do's and don'ts of um, that specific concept or to just get a better understanding. And I saw reading a little bit above, a little bit below that specific verse. That's where the line upon line comes comes in. You have to make sure that you're getting that into context. OK, make sure that you're getting the whole meaning of that specific topic in context by reading a little bit above and a little below that specific verse. Second Timothy two at 15, second Timothy two at verse 15, study to show thyself approved unto Yahweh, a workman that needed not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. You have to meditate in the scriptures day and night you have to meditate in the scriptures day and night you got to make sure that you're using it as like you're eating bread and people eat bread like often so you have to make sure that you are um, keeping your mind in the scriptures for you to use it as a book of reproof and correction um a workman that needed not to be ashamed this is a person who who works to gain, gain an understanding of the Bible. That means keeping your mind in it, not being ashamed by always referencing it or um, pointing out specific verses to people because you know it. So if you're proving that uh, or studying to prove thyself worthy unto Yahweh, you will be able to rightly divide the word of truth by finding those precepts uh, to help. Um, gauge your lesson or prove a point that you are trying to make. Um, so I wanted to mention I was, uh, Joshua 1 8. I just posted this verse today on my Facebook, which um, shows that this book should be used in a manner that uh, we should be trying to observe everything that's in it. And that's a perfect verse that I, I should have put in this lesson, but it's not. But I read that verse this morning and I, 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 I wish well, I wish to add it to this lesson. So Joshua 1 8, it says this book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth. That means you must stay in it and not go away from it. But thou shall meditate therein day and night that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written with um, therein. So we should be reading this book, studying this book, 
showing ourselves approved unto Yahweh as a workman by using it to correct ourselves. Okay. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. So using this book as a book of correction, um, observing what is in it can help us in our good ways and make our lives prosperous. And a precept to that is 2 Timothy 3 at 16 through 17. 2 Timothy 3 at verse 16 through 17. All scripture is given by inspiration of Yahweh and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. This book was given to us to help us correct the way that we're living through grace. So this is from the New Testament. So this is when the 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 um the the covenant of grace comes in, the renewed covenant of grace. We're supposed to use this book as correction through this grace period to get ourselves together. Thus, the law of sacrifice is no more because grace is the renewing of the covenant. Okay, that the man of Yahweh may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. So this book was given to us for a reproof and correction, and we must study it in order to correct our lives and correct to the way we are living, which is not the way we should be living according to the word and what's going on in the world today. Okay. Ecclesiastes 12 at 13. Ecclesiastes 12 at 13. This is the whole the whole duty of man. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear Yahweh and keep his commandments. For this is the whole duty of man. Our purpose is to fear the Most High and keep his laws, statutes, and commandments, or the book that he gave us as reproof and correction. We should be living to correct ourselves through the scripture in order to, to fear him in, in general. Okay, so that's the whole duty is to correct ourselves in order to make it into the everlasting kingdom that is to come. Okay. These three verses go hand in hand as you are studying the scriptures and using it to correct yourself in your life. So again, like I mentioned today, our focus is going to be the learning and and the, the information that is needed to understand the blowing of the trumpets or the feast of trumpets. Um, and we're going to focus on the actual commandment. In Leviticus chapter 23 at verse 23 through 25. This is the commandment that was given to us from the Most High, mentioning that we should be keeping this specific feast day. Now, the book of Leviticus chapter 23 pretty much tells you all the feast days you should be keeping, not the so-called holidays that we're keeping today. So the holidays that are mentioned in the scripture are still uh, should be observed today. Mm -hmm. We should still be keeping these days as the chosen people of the Most High. We should not um, be following the heathens' ways of the so-called holidays and their and their so-called holidays is what I call it, holidays. Um, and through these so-called holidays or holidays that we see ourselves partaking in. It's actually a worship of their gods, a praising of their specific gods. But we are taught um, that these days are sacred and, and days that we should be keeping. But if you actually study and look into the origins of these specific holidays that we are celebrating today in this world, they all have pagan or satanic origins, things that goes against the most high and what he state to us in scripture the bible tells us the so-called holy days in which we should be keeping as the chosen people of the most high and for those who want to partake or follow the faith of the abrahamic uh, faith of the israelites okay so it's not just for israel for those who you who want to 
to to believe that the Israelites are the chosen people and want to believe that the Most High, who is the the God of Israel, is being the overall top God. You can also repent and come back into this truth and keep these so-called holy days. So it's not just pinpointed on Israel only. Israel should be the main people observing this day and the other nations and other heathens if they want to partake they can but they have to believe that the Israelites are the chosen people of the most high and um, we are the future leaders of this world well of the next world to come not this world the future world to come so the most high has given us holy days to observe for generations so it's just not in the time of the Israelites as a nation. Even throughout the captivities that we were placed upon, we were still to observe these days. There are some Israelites out there who say we we are not, um, uh, uh, we shouldn't be keeping the holy days because we're not in our land or we're not a nation. No, we are to keep these same holy days throughout our generations, no matter where we're at, no matter what captivity we're in. Okay, we are to keep these days no matter what throughout our generations. It is not supposed to stop. There are a great number of days we should be keeping, thus says Yahweh. And one of them that is coming up tonight is the Feast of Trumpets. We're going to actually look at the calendar because we have a few Israelite brothers who keep um, uh, or follow the calendar based off the lunar, lunar cycle. We have some Israelites who keep the the holidays and the Sabbath based off the solar cycle. And we have some who keep it based off of the number of the Sabbaths. We also have some Israelite brothers out there who follow the calendar of the Jewish people, which um, I don't want to get into today. But um uh, we have some brothers who keep the, uh, the the holy days based off the Jewish calendar. Now, the reason why we have so many calendars is because of the many captivities that we were placed upon. Okay, every captivity used a specific calendar, and we were taught to use that specific calendar. So that is why a lot of us are using different calendars. Me personally. I would like to use the Enoch calendar. Why? Because Enoch was one of the most holiest men on this earth that was taken from us without death by the Most High. So why not use this holy man's calendar? The Enoch calendar, which goes upon the vernal equinox, is the calendar that I personally use and which makes, if, I use, if we were to use that calendar, it makes the September 19th as the first day of the seventh month which is the feast of trumpets okay so cool that's why we see so many calendars and so many dates for these specific holy days because people are using different calendars lunar calendar solar calendar jewish calendar or um the numbering of the sabbaths based off the moon all right so um so that's why i i wanted to mention that a lot of us are just using different calendars. I personally are, am using the Enoch calendar, which is the calendar I've always used. Um, and I base my holidays based off of that calendar, um, off the vernal equinox. So, um, yeah, I'm not bashing anybody who uh, celebrate these days on different calendars. If that's the calendar that you're using, use it. Um, as of right now, we do not have a set calendar for the nation of Israel. So, um, and we have different beliefs based off what the scripture says. And remember those scriptures were written in the times of those captivities. So that's why we see different um, calendars used within the scripture, okay? So um, I cannot fault anybody for using the lunar calendar or the solar calendar. I can't because that is what we have been using throughout scripture. We have been using multiple calendars. So I personally believe that we should be going back to the first calendar that we were using um, in the time of Enoch. Um, I think that would probably be the best fit for us. But again, I cannot bash anybody for using a specific calendar. As long as you are celebrating 
and observing these feast days, I have no 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 type of hatred towards you. You're keeping the other days to the best of your knowledge, and that is what is um, what matters, especially today. Okay, so the Most High sees that you are observing these days, and keep it to the best of your ability. Some things we can't do anymore. Okay, so like going out, getting a lamb, cutting it, draining it. We don't have that type of resources anymore. So we have to go to the store and buy some lamb, um, specifically holidays that you're keeping, um, etc. Or you can't uh, do everything that is said to observe for that specific day because we don't have those resources or we're in a changed world that we can't find those resources. So, of course, follow it to the best of your ability is what the Most High wants you to do right now until we are um, given those resources in the kingdom to come. So that's why I mentioned the, uh, the prophet Enoch was one of the most holiest guys. And I will perfectly want to use that specific calendar. OK, so again, in this lesson, we will learn what is the feast day of trumpets and um, how we should be keeping it and finding those specific verses that mentions it to help us understand how we should be keeping it and what it is. OK, so let's go ahead and read the verse of Leviticus chapter 23, verse 23 to 25. It says, And Yahweh spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, In the seventh month, in the seventh month, in the first day of the month, shall ye have a Sabbath. So this day is considered a Sabbath. Okay, a memorial of blowing of trumpets and holy convocation. Ye shall do no servile work therein, but ye shall offer an offering made by fire unto Yahweh. Okay, so just for, like I mentioned earlier in the book of Leviticus, chapter 23, there are a list of all the days in which we should be keeping the Sabbaths, the new moon feasts. Um, um, the Feast of Trumpets, Passover, uh, Unleavened Bread, the Feast, uh, the First, um, or First Fruits, uh, Pentecost, um, uh, Day of Atonement, Feast of Tabernacles, Feast of Dedication. All these feasts were given to us, um, uh, in the book of uh, Leviticus, chapter 23, um, in observance of these specific days as commandments. These are commandments. So remember, the Old Testament pretty much speaks of most of the commandments given to us by the Most High. And we do find some commandments written in the New Testament as well and the Apocrypha and other lost books. But most of them are found within the Old Testament. And of course, in the first five books, which is the Torah, um, which was command uh, the commandments given to the Mo given to Moses from the Most High. So straight from this verse, straight from the mouth of the Most High himself, we see that he commands Moses to inform us that we are to keep the first day of the seventh month as a memorial of blowing of trumpets and shall be considered a Sabbath to which we were to con 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 uh, con um, congregate, meet, assemble. That's what convocation means. Um, with other like-minded brothers and sisters. That means other Israelites um, who seek the truth and who are trying to observe what is written to us in Scripture. It says that there should be no serve our work. So you should not be going to work. You should not be um, tending to your, your land. You should not be doing anything that is serve out. Okay. It is a Sabbath. That means we are not supposed to be working. We're not supposed to be buying or selling, but we can. It tells us right here in the scripture that we can cook. It says ye shall offer a burnt offering or an offering made by fire unto Yahweh. So we are allowed to cook. We just are not allowed to work. Okay. So make sure that we're following what is stated in scripture. A lot of us are saying that, um, this is a Sabbath. We shouldn't, we shouldn't be cooking. Right here in Scripture, it tells us that ye shall not do any servile work, but you are allowed to give an offering 
by fire to your house. So you can kindle a fire through cooking and offer a burnt offering to him by, of course, cooking, which is stated right here in Scripture. So um, you are allowed to cook on um, the Feast of Trumpets. Now, a few of our lost brothers and sisters may not understand the part about the seventh month. So I'm going to pretty much just focus on the Enoch calendar. Like I said, I am not downgrading or saying I, I disagree with whatever calendar that you are following, but I am going to just prove to you that um, the seventh day or the first day of the seventh month is on the 19th based upon the Enoch calendar. So there are a lot of um, brothers and sisters out there who are not in the truth, who are saying the seventh month, the seventh month is actually July. Why are you doing it in September? I'm going to prove to you through the Enoch calendar that uh, the first month is March. And of course, that will make the seventh month of September. OK, so um, many of our brothers and sisters who are lost are using the Roman calendar, the Gregorian calendar. And using it as January being the first month, when actuality, in the eyes of the Most High, the first month is when things come to life. So how can things come to life in the dead of winter? I have no idea. Um, but again, that is the Roman calendar. That is the calendar that the Romans use that we are still using today, uh, which still makes that America is from the Roman system. So... That, that just goes into another lesson, which I'm not going to get into today. But um, we are using the Gregorian calendar in the world today. So the seventh month, it would be July. But if we were to go back to the actual biblical calendar that we use in this time, the time of um, Enoch, Noah, and all of uh, the forefathers of the nation of Israel, um, the earlier forefathers of the nation of Israel, they used the Enoch calendar. Um so we're going to show you that uh, the seventh month is the month of September, and which starts on September the 19th tonight. Um, and again, the days start at night. So um, September 19th will start on the sunset of September the 18th. All right. So here is the Enoch calendar. Okay, so again, the Enoch calendar is based upon the vernal equinox. Okay, so this is the day where the uh, the 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 days start getting. Um, where I would say the days where the, this is where the time spring actually begins. Okay, so the vernal equinox will be on March the twentieth this specific year. Okay, so March twentieth is the first day of the year. So the, the 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 Enoch calendar always starts in the middle to end of March. Okay, so that makes a month beginning of March. I mean, the middle of March, middle endish part of March to the middle endish part of April. And you have to remember the calendar that we're using today, the Roman calendar, is a little bit different compared to well, not a little bit, a lot different compared to the Enoch calendar. The Enoch calendar says that our days should be 30, 30, 31, 30, 30, 31, 30, 30, 31, 30, 30, 31, as far as the days in which we should be observing each specific month. Every month with 31 is either the equinoxes or the um, solstice. Okay, so the spring equinox, autumn equinox, and then the winter solstice and the summer solstice. Those are uh, the time stamps to figure out when times are ch uh, changing or seasons are changing. Let me say that. Seasons are changing. So those 31 day months are the days in which um, we should be counting our exact months or our, our days. So the autumn equinox or the fall equinox is today, okay? Saturdays um, on um, September 18th. That is today. Um, if we were to take a look at the Enoch calendar, we can see that the seventh month is in September. Remember, the equinoxes 
or the solstice or the last days of a specific month in seasons. Okay, so this is beginning our uh, fall season. So that means that is the last day of the sixth month. So the first day of the seventh month will be the Feast of Trumpets, which says September 19th, which is tomorrow. This is based off the Enoch calendar. Again, a lot of our brothers and sisters are using other calendars to keep these specific feast days. Okay. So again, as mentioned, go back to how our days are counted. 30, 30, 31, 30, 30, 31. That'll be six. And then 30, this month begins our seventh month. So this is our 31st day of our sixth month. First day of the seventh month is the Feast of Trumpets, which was observed to keep in the book of Leviticus chapter 23 at verse 23 to 26, if I'm not mistaken. Um, our first day of the seventh month will be Sunday, tomorrow. So we're to blow our trumpets tonight and observe it for this specific day. So here um, in the Roman calendar, we can see that it's a lot different compared to our earlier calendar that we were keeping in the time of Noah and Enoch himself. Um, but like I said, all these captivities have led us away from our original calendar that we don't know what is our original calendar. So um, make sure that we are using a calendar in which you feel best fits um, what you believe in as far as how you're studying the scripture. I personally would go to the earlier calendar, which was given to us by a holy man that was taken from us without death, the Enoch calendar, which I feel is the calendar that all Israel should be utilizing um, as far as keeping the holy days, um, keeping holy days. Okay. Um, let's move on. So what is the Feast of Trumpets? What is the Feast of Trumpets? So the blowing of the trumpets is when children of Israel will blow the trumpets at the beginning of the months and go to war. And we're going to read some verse that mentions um, blowing the trumpets at war. Um, they will sound the trumpet and the Most High Yahweh will remember them before they go to war and would eventually save them from their enemies, their oppressors, their uh, captors. Okay, um, This holiday is celebrated during the seventh month on the Enoch calendar. So I mentioned this is just a reference to the Enoch calendar, the seventh month on the Enoch calendar. And of course, people use other calendars to help uh, in alignment with the Enoch calendar. I personally believe that this calendar is the best calendar to follow and, of course, um, to keep our days as uh, close to where they should be on the actual calendar. Um, the trumpet is a sound of the alarm for the coming of the Messiah. So that is to come. Um, in scripture, it mentions that you will be hearing a sound of trumpet in the time of the returning of the Messiah. So that again goes back to war. There will be a great war when the Messiah come back. So that goes back to the war part. So um, this is the Feast of Trumpets is our first celebration of the fall season in the year. Okay. So this is a joyful time where all praises are due to the Most High Yahweh. This is a call to the start of war and an alarm to wake up the true children of Israel, the most highest chosen people. Okay. So hopefully the long the more we celebrate this day, the more we blow our trumpets, the more we send out this information to our people, more and more of us are going to come up and realize this is the days that we should be keeping and not these so-called holidays that are on the Roman calendar that most of us are still observing. Christmas, Thanksgiving, uh, pagan New Year's. Um, J July 4th, um, uh, Easter, those are the ones that has nothing to do with scripture. Okay. So um, hopefully 
the more we observe this day, uh, the more we give out these lessons, the more, and I'm not just talking about me, I'm talking about all brothers out there who are creating lessons and helping our people wake up to the truth um, into what we should be observing and give biblical proof of these encounters and these um, things that we should be doing that more of us will will wake up and uh, come back to the truth in our one true God, Yahweh himself. So during this day, we are supposed to congregate, which is to have a holy convocation, to assemble together with other like-minded brothers and sisters of the truth and have a feast that is dedicated to um, the Most High as we are preparing for the coming of the Messiah and for any other wars or battles we are facing um, in captivity today in Babylon the Great, also known as the American Roman system that is applied with, uh, within this whole world. It's not just America. This Roman system controls the whole world. So it's not just America. I don't feel that Babylon the Great is just America. But it's the Roman system that we are living in in America and in other countries around the world as far as its governing system and its religious system, which all falls back to Roman Catholicism, which controls every religion of the Abrahamic faith today. So Christianity, uh, Judaism, as well as Islam. The Roman Catholic Church or Roman Catholicism is what controls those Abrahamic faiths. And I wouldn't be surprised if it controls other religions as well, but that is the only thing I know. So I cannot mention those other religions as of right now. I will be studying into that to see how that aligns with um, Roman Catholicism and earlier um, Roman Catholicism and Zionism and um, the earlier religions that connects with Roman Catholicism. So it's a system. It's not just a country. It's not just a specific religion. It is a whole system, governing system that is applied to the whole world. That's why everybody's using the Roman calendar. Um, and that's why a lot of countries are using or celebrating those Roman holidays. Uh, it's a system and Roman Catholicism, Roman um, Catholics are the ones who are controlling every religion that's aligned to the Abrahamic faith. And a lot of our people do not understand that. And that is the problem where we have this battle with our brothers and sisters who are in Christianity or who are leaving Christianity to go to Islam, which is no different um, than Christianity as it still is pushing lies that is not aligned to what is stated in the scripture. How can you believe in a religion that has its own book that is not even mentioned in the Bible? How can you follow a religion that has their own book that don't even follow what the Bible says. They say the Bible is corrupted. When nothing can corrupt the word that is written, if you proving yourself as a workman and studying the scriptures as the Most High says, that is the main reason why he writes the way he writes. That's why the prophets wrote the way they wrote because the Most High told them to write that specific way because the Most High knew that if we were to write things verbatim, that things would be changed. If you study to prove yourself as a workman, you can see all the lies that is in this world today based off what you are studying, precept upon precept, line upon line, rightly dividing the world of truth. Christianity are saying that the Old Testament laws are done away with. Where is that stated? They have us confused. They have us in a spiritual, religious bondage. 
that is not aligned to what is stated in scripture. We are reading precept upon precept, line upon line, here a little, there a little, rightly dividing the word of truth. We have people who say they have studied the Bible, but don't know what is in it. Don't know that books are missing. There's no way you studied the Bible if you have never touched the Apocrypha. There is no way that you say that you studied the Bible if you never touched the book of Enoch, the book of Jasher, the book of Jubilees, the many, many, many other lost books out there. You haven't studied the Bible. You haven't studied the scripture. You haven't studied the word of the most high if you have not studied all of scripture. You're confused. You're lost because you have not dug into those other books. Judaism only believing in the Old Testament. When in other books it's mentioning of the Messiah. Yeah, they're keeping the holy days. You're supposed to. It's not done away with. So at least they're doing that. But Christianity, we have them following something that is not even scriptural. They think grace is a time period of them doing whatever they want. What sense does that make? And I mentioned this in many other my other lessons. Grace is a time period of correction. The only law that has been done away with is the law of sacrifice through grace. I, I, I think I want to mention this in every lesson because a lot of our people just did not understand what grace is. It doesn't mean we can live freely and, and uh, repent when we want to repent. As I mentioned, the book is used for correction. That is our grace period. We are to use that book as correction to live a righteous life. Thus, we have to keep the holy days. Thus, we have to keep the Sabbaths. Thus, we have to keep the law. The only law we do not have to keep is sacrificial law. Because the Messiah was our last sacrifice. That's why he's called the sacrificial lamb. Through his death, we are now given grace. No longer have to kill an animal for our sins, but to repent and correct ourselves. That don't means repent and continue doing that same sin. Realize what you're doing wrong. Repent. And do your best to not fall back into that sin. That is what grace is. And these feast days must be kept. These holy days must be kept. That's a sign to you and your God. The Most High Yahweh. If you consider yourself a person of the Most High, a believer of the Most High, you should be keeping these feast days. You should be following what is said in Scripture. Let's take a deeper look at some precepts or other mentioning of the so-called Feast of Trumpets in Scripture. Okay, so we're going to read the book of Numbers, chapter 29, verse 1 through 6. Numbers 29 at verse 1 through 6. And in the seventh month, so again, we see a reference to the seventh month. On the first day of the month, on the first day of the seventh month, ye shall have a holy convocation, an assembly of like-minded people. Ye shall do no servile work. So we see that same mentioning that we saw in Leviticus 23 at verse 23 to 26, that we should not be doing any servile work and we should be having a holy convocation. It is a day of blowing the trumpets unto you and ye shall 
offer a burnt offering for a sweet savor unto Yahweh. One young bullock, one ram, and seven lambs of the first year within without blemish. So this is telling us what we should be um, using as sacrifices unto the Most High, which we no longer have to keep. Okay, so we still have to, of course, have a offering that means cooking food on a specific day. Um, but we do not have to have a burnt offering because the law of sacrifice is no more. And their meat offering shall be a flour mingled with oil. So it tells you how to cook this specific um, offering. Three tenth deals for a bullock, two tenth deals for a ram, and one tenth deal for one lamb um, without the seven, with, throughout the seven lambs, excuse me. And one kid of the goats for a sin offering to make an atonement for you beside the birth offerings of the month and his uh, meat offering and the daily birth offering and his meat offering and their drink offerings according unto the, their manner for a sweet savor, a sacrifice made by fire unto Yahweh. So again, this is going back to the sacrifices that we were to keep um, at that time. Again, we no longer have to sacrifice animals anymore for our sins. So it tells us how to sacrifice, what we should be sacrificing uh, unto Yahweh on a specific day, according to or besides the other offerings that we were to make for our other sins. So this is a different offering, not our normal daily offering of our sins at that time. So again, we are no longer have to keep that specific uh, sacrificial law because of the new, the, uh, not new, the renewing of the covenant that were given to us. So here we can see that we are allowed to cook on a specific holy day. It is a Sabbath when it comes to working and buying things. So of course, we are to keep the other um, laws of, uh, of, the, of the Sabbath, but we are allowed to cook on that specific day. The Israelites were given order on what type of burnt offerings they should be cooking on a specific day and also provide instruction on how to cook it. We were to cook it with flour mingled with oil. So there are many ways you can use flour and oil. So we can't just say it's just frying. Um, you can actually smother things with flour and oil as well. Um, and this verse it is not saying that it cannot be cooked in water. So I'm assuming that we could be allowed to smother things. Um, uh, also, we can put on a grill. We can use flour and oil on a grill as well. So um, frying, smothering, um, or on a grill, just make sure that it's mingled with flour and oil. That was a commandment given to us in scripture on how we should be cooking this specific food. Uh, in verse 5 and 6, we see that a young goat should be used as a sin offering. Now, this goes back to the law of sacrifice, like I just mentioned, which is no longer in place today. Um, this is the only law that has been done away with through the um, sacrifice of the Messiah in um, his sacrifice um, um at that time is that like i said mentions bring forth of the new grace the renewing of the the covenant through grace so we no longer have to kill animals for our sins due to the messiah being our sacrificial lamb um and that's where the term grace come in or the renewing of the covenant through grace now here is another mentioning of the trumpets as it relates to war um um we should blow on the trumpet as it relates to war. I'm not going to read all of this. I'm just going to read um, the first part. If you would like to read the rest, it pretty much goes into another time, um, the second month, 12th day, which we're not going to point into right now. But I'm going to mention the blowing of the trumpets through war uh, in this specific verse. So Numbers chapter 10, and we're going to read verse 9 through maybe 10 or 11. I should have kept these numbered. But just the part where it says um, 
blowing of the trumpets through war. And if ye go to war in your land against the enemy that oppresseth the, you, then ye shall blow an alarm with the trumpets, and ye shall be remembered before Yahweh your God, and ye shall be saved from your enemy, also in the day of your gladness, and in your solemn days, and in the beginning of your months. In the beginning of your month. So again, the seventh month, first day is the blowing of trumpets, which is the beginning of months. Ye shall blow with the trumpets, with your burnt offerings, and off and uh and over the sacrifices of your peace offerings, that they may be to you for a memorial before your God. I am Yahweh, your God. So again, it's mentioning on the first day. Of the month we should be blowing the trumpets not only on the seventh day but every first day of the month should be a blowing of the trumpets but the seventh month first day is the um, the uh, blowing of trumpets so that's the actual feast day that we should be keeping for the first month of each month so um, the observance of the blowing of trumpets is the seventh day first month and it just tells us that we were to go to war Blowing of the trumpets will help the Most High remember us and save us from our enemies. So even in captivity today, we are at war. We are in a spiritual war today in America. We are in a spiritual war in Babylon the Great, the world that we live in today. So we must blow these trumpets as we are fighting this spiritual battle every single day. Okay? Blowing of the trumpets just shows and helps the Most High remember us to help us through these battles that we face every single day. Okay, so I want to leave you with this. Let this marinate in your spin. So we just mentioned or to discussed what the Feast of Trumpets is or blowing of the trumpets, however you want to call it. Uh, we should be keeping this as observance on the seventh day of the first month. Um, based off the e night calendar, that will be uh, tonight, uh, September the 19th. Um, but there are other brothers and sisters out there who are using other calendars. And I have no issue with that. Uh, as long as we are observing this day uh, or in any other of the feast days and holy days that were commanded to us by the Most High, he understands that we are in captivity and placed through seven different captivities. So we are a little bit confused on which calendar to use. Should we use a lunar calendar, which will be told to us in scripture? Should we use solar? Should we use the Sabbath? All this was mentioned in, cap in, in scripture through these captivities. So we must understand that when these books were written, they were written in those captivities in which the prophets were in. So that's why we're seeing uh, many different calendars used in scripture. I personally believe we should be aligning ourselves with one of the earliest calendars um, where that was used in the time of Enoch and Noah, which is the Enoch calendar. I feel is the most uh, reliable calendar to use as it uh was written or used by a very, very holy man and um, our forefather Noah during that time. So um, I personally use the Enoch calendar and that will make the seventh month starting tonight. So I want to leave you with this. Um, as we are studying this truth and as we are um, learning um, through the scripture, we must understand that we were given these laws these holy days for a reason to set ourselves apart from the rest of the world and to give all praises and honor to our God who has been very, very uh, understanding and, and very, very patient with his people. Uh, yeah, 4,000, 5,000 years is a long time to be patient very very long time to be patient um, and our people has been been led astray 
through these specific religions and man-made philosophies. Uh, we have went towards other gods in these 5,000, 6,000, however many thousand years that we knew the Most High as our God. Uh, and, 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 and it's hard to, to uh, break away from these specific things as we are living in a world that is not of the Most High. So he is very, very patient. And he gave us these specific laws, that's the commandments, holy days, to keep ourselves and keep our minds on him. Okay. Um, to set ourselves apart from um, the other nations who are worshiping other gods. So we must do our best to learn these scriptures, use it as correction and reproof, keep these holy days. And follow our one true God. So I want to leave you with this specific, um, these specific verses in the book of Deuteronomy, the book of Torah, um, chapter twelve, verse twenty-nine through thirty-two. I just want to leave you with this to help that ponder in your spirit, marinate in your spirit, as we all are learning and try our best to follow the Most High. And observe and do what he commanded and instructed us to do so we can set ourselves apart and make it unto the kingdom that is to come. So Deuteronomy 12 at 29 to 32. When Yahweh thy God shall cut off the nations from before thee, whether they whether thou goest to possess them and thou succeedest them and dwellest in their land. Take heed to thyself that, thy, that thou be not snared by following them. After that, they be destroyed from before thee, and that thou inquire not after their gods, not following these other gods. Say, how did these nations serve their gods? Even so will I do likewise. Thou shalt not do so unto Yahweh thy God. For every abomination to Yahweh which he hateth, have they done unto their gods. Let me read that again. How did these nations serve their gods? These are the calendars that we are using today and follow and using their holy their holidays, holy days, well not holidays, holidays in observance to their gods. So the same way we observe our gods with our holidays, they are doing with their holidays or holidays. They're worshiping their gods. Their holidays are not biblical. How did these nations serve their gods? Even so will I do likewise. Thou shalt not do so unto Yahweh thy God. For every abomination to Yahweh which he hated, have they done unto their gods. For even their sons and their daughters have they have burnt unto their unto the excuse me, trying to talk to fat. For every abomination to Yahweh, which he hated, have they done unto their gods. For even their sons and their daughters, they have burnt in the fire to their gods. So this goes back to um, Lamech and 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 the other uh, gods that they use their children as burnt offerings. What thing soever I command you, what thing soever I command you, observe to do it. Thou shalt not add thereto, nor diminish from it. What thing soever I command you, this is the scripture. This is from the Most High. The Most High gave us holy days to keep and laws to observe and keep. To observe to do it, thou shalt not add thereto or diminish from it. We are not to add our own holy days to the scripture. We are to keep exactly what it says to keep. We are not to keep these holidays that these other nations are partaking in. We were given the our holidays, 
which are the holy days of the scripture in the book of Leviticus chapter 23. Those are the days we should be observing and we should not be adding or diminishing from it based upon scripture. Okay, so I want to let you let that marinate in your spirit as we are observing the blowing of the trumpets tonight. Um, and the other holidays that are to come. I know the um, Day of Atonement, based off the Ignite calendar, will be September the 28th. That is a day that is considered a actual Sabbath day, um, a fasting day. Um, so we should not be working. That's a Tuesday. So we should not be working on September the 28th. I will be calling, uh, well, putting my day in for that day. We should be using that day as a fasting day. So no eating, no drinking unless you have to as far as medicine and your own health. Um, and we should be fasting, like I mentioned, and of course, uh, repenting for all of our sins throughout the year. Uh, praying unto the Most High and um, just repenting for the whole day. Praying, fasting. Um, and reading the scripture as we are commanded to for that specific day. And then we have the um, Feast of Tabernacles, which is the following week, which will be October. The, it's actually starting on a Sunday this year based off of the Enoch calendar. So October the 3rd through um, October the 10th, which is the um, last great day. So it is an eighth day feast um, on the first and the last day is considered a Sabbath. So we have a double Sabbath um, that weekend, just like this week weekend. But um, the third and the tenth are observed as actual Sabbath. So no work, no cooking, no cleaning on that specific day. OK, so with that being said. I hope you all enjoyed this lesson. If it was all truthful and um, in good spirit, all praise to the Most High. If anything that was mentioned in this lesson was false, may the Most High um, bless me and guide me to um, correction and reproof uh, through the scriptures and through the spirit. Uh, I hope this all this lesson, like I said, came in good spirits, and I hope you all are observing observing the uh, Feast of Trumpets based off whatever calendar that you're using. I know some of our brothers and sisters that I'm close to um, observed it today. I know a few of us actually observed it on Thursday the base, um, through the um, the Jewish calendar. Um, and then we have some who actually observe it based off other calendars. So as long as you are observing it, may the most I continue to bless you through those holidays. And um, help us all um, get a better understanding of what calendar that we should be using, um, how we should be observing these days, and how we can use the book as reproof and correction. May the Most High bless you all. With that, continue to enjoy your Sabbath um, and get your rest. Uh, study the truth to show thyself approved. And of course, spend time with like minded family and friends as we are. Um, trying to do our best to uh, make it to the kingdom to come. With that, Shabbat Shalom. Enjoy.